Chelsea are a team who, throughout Roman Abramovich's 19 years at the helm, were hyper-fixated on the short term and on winning trophies. That is why Roman's reign heralded a managerial merry-go-round unlike any other elite-level football club on the planet, and if one summer of throwing money at a particular problem didn't work, the Blues would simply try, try, and try again until it did. In fairness to them, whilst a lot is made of the virtues of stability and consistency within the world of football, Chelsea proved that chaos, tumult, and indeed instability can still be a recipe for success, as they won every major trophy on offer to them during that time, becoming one of the most successful teams in Europe, and only twice failing to qualify for the Champions League. What's more, whilst it isn't talked about anywhere near often enough, Chelsea developed arguably the best and most productive academy in all of world football during the Abramovich era, and certainly the most productive in England, becoming utterly dominant for a long time in the FA Youth Cup, and churning out a quite remarkable conveyor belt of talent. One of the drawbacks of Chelsea's hyper-fixation on the short term and on trophies though, whilst ultimately successful, was the number of players that it led to them letting slip through the net. Whether it be impressive academy graduates or bright new young signings, rarely were players given the opportunity to flourish in the first team if they were unable to hit the ground running. So in today's video, in a bit of a throwback to some of the earlier videos that I used to make on this channel, I thought that we would take a look at an incredible starting 11 of so-called Chelsea rejects. The 11 is based on the player's talents right now, and whilst the term rejects is, obviously, a bit loaded, I just mean players who never made it at Stamford Bridge and were let go by the club without them putting up too much of a fight. Alright, here we go. Goalkeeper, Neil Etheridge. It's hardly a Petr Cech or Thibaut Courtois to get us started. In fact, goalkeeper is without doubt the weakest position in this 11, but we still have what I would describe as a very solid candidate in the form of Neil Etheridge. Born in Enfield, London to an English father and a Filipino mother, Etheridge joined Chelsea in 2003 as a 13-year-old, and he departed three years later, signing a professional contract with West London rivals Fulham after he was released by the Blues. Etheridge only ever made one appearance for Fulham, but after almost quitting football, he was able to get his career back on track from 2015 to 2017 at Walsall in League One. By 2018, Etheridge was back in the Premier League, as a number one this time, impressing for Cardiff City despite their relegation. Now age 32, Etheridge plays for Birmingham City in the Championship, he has won 70 caps for the Philippines, and whilst he might not be the biggest name in this 11, I think that he is a pretty safe pair of hands to get us up and running. Right back, Tino Livramento. I was spoilt for choice at right back, where Chelsea have sanctioned the sales of Olorena, Tarek Lamptey, and Tino Livramento, all in the last three years alone. Lamptey and Livramento are both a cut above Aina, and although Lamptey is genuinely one of my favourite players to watch in the Premier League, I find him endlessly entertaining and think that he is absolutely brilliant, I think that there is something quite special about Tino Livramento. Unlike a lot of players in this 11, I do think that Chelsea recognised the talents of both Lamptey and Livramento before they left the club. It was just a case of Reese James being very good and very young, and the pair of them wanting to get game time that Chelsea were therefore unable to guarantee them. Tino Livramento, who joined Chelsea at the age of seven and represented England at every youth level whilst contracted to the club, was sold to Southampton for around £5 million in 2021 before making his Chelsea debut, though the Blues did insert a £25 million buyback clause into that deal. Livramento was astonishingly good for someone of his age last season, before suffering a devastating cruciate ligament rupture, which has sidelined him since April. Centre-back, Mark Gay. We have an exceptionally good centre-back pairing in this 11, both of whom actually tend to play on the left side of centre-back, despite being primarily right-footed, and both look equally assured playing on either side. Mark Gay is particularly two-footed, in addition to being strong in the air, absolutely rapid, 
and a brilliant aggressive front foot defender. Like Livramento, Gay was a permanent fixture for England at every youth level, but Chelsea didn't feel that he was quite ready to step up to the first team in 2021, following an impressive loan spell at Swansea City. The sale of Gay seems particularly ill-judged in light of Antonio Rudiger and Andreas Christensen's departures this summer, but Chelsea felt that they were left with no choice after the youngster refused to go out on loan again. Gay joined Crystal Palace last summer for somewhere between 18 to 20 million pounds, where he was sufficiently impressive to win three senior caps for England. Unlike Livramento, there is no agreed buyback fee that Chelsea have for Gay, but they do get first refusal for the same price if Palace accepts a bid from anyone else. Centre-back, Fakayo Tomori. Mark Gay and Fakayo Tomori are good enough to play for England, both having won three caps to date, but they apparently weren't good enough to be guaranteed first-team football at Chelsea at the time of their departures. Fakayo Tomori, who was born in Canada to Nigerian parents, joined Chelsea at the age of seven and made his Premier League debut for the club at the age of 18. Low moves to Brighton, Hull, and Derby followed before Tomori got his big break at the bridge under Frank Lampard in light of the club's transfer ban. Despite impressing when called upon, the arrival of Thiago Silva relegated him to fifth or sixth choice centre-back, prompting Tomori to join AC Milan, initially on loan, but then in a £25 million permanent deal. Age 24, Tomori has since been excellent and has won a Scudetto at the San Siro, so he waltzes straight into this alone. Left back, Nathan Ake. The abundance of options available to us at left back, once again, was overwhelming, including the likes of Ryan Bertrand, Patrick Van Arnholt, and even Felipe Luiz. Based solely upon the here and now though, which is my stated criteria, even if it isn't his strongest position, I cannot look beyond Nathan Ake. Like most of our back line, Chelsea knew that Ake could play when they sold him, but that didn't change the fact that he had only played 17 games in the previous four seasons. Bournemouth paid a club record £20 million to take Ake off Chelsea's hands, and three years later, following relegation, he became technically, the most expensive championship player of all time in a £41 million move to Manchester City. Ake is a rotation player at the Etihad, hence why Chelsea tried their luck at re-signing him at the beginning of this summer, but they were unable to meet the citizens' valuation. Central midfield, Declan Rice. Surely among Chelsea's biggest regrets, Declan Rice grew up supporting Chelsea, and he joined the club's youth ranks as a seven-year-old. He was devastated, half his lifetime later, when the Blues released him at the age of 14, but Chelsea's loss was very much West Ham's gain. The Hammers wasted no time offering Rice a youth, and shortly after a professional contract, and his rise has been meteoric ever since. A centre-back turned defensive midfielder, who is progressive enough and good enough on the ball to play even further forward, Rice is now one of the most valuable footballers in the world. West Ham value Rice, at in excess of £150 million, despite him having turned down their last three contract offers, with his current deal set to run until 2024, with the option of an extra year on the Hammers part. Central midfield, Mario Pasalic. Maybe not as high profile of an example of one that got away for Chelsea compared to Declan Rice, particularly because he plays his club football in Syria rather than in the same city as them, Mario Pasalic is nonetheless some player. He was signed by Chelsea in 2014 for around £2.5 million from Hedrick Split, but he was unable, initially, to play for the club, even if they had wanted him to, due to the fact that he was denied a work permit. Pasalic went out on loan to Elche, Monaco, AC Milan, Spartak Moscow, and Atalanta, so his talents weren't exactly a secret. But in that last loan move to Atalanta, Chelsea allowed the Italians to insert a buyout clause of just £13.4 million. A really clever central midfielder, both in and out of possession, with solid technique, he immediately flourished playing under Gian Piero Gasparini, and the club from Bergamo had no hesitation in activating the clause in his loan deal. A couple of years later, you would have to say that Atalanta got themselves 
an absolute bargain, and there weren't many Serie A players who were more impressive than Pashalic last season. Attacking midfield, Kevin De Bruyne. This is an 11 which is littered with absolutely tremendous, if not downright world-class footballers, but even amongst that crop, Kevin De Bruyne, is the real jewel in this side who stands out above all the rest. When Chelsea signed De Bruyne from Genk for just £7 million in 2012, they ought to have just pulled off one of the greatest transfer coups of the century. As is, so often the case with youngsters signed by Chelsea though, De Bruyne was sent straight out on loan, to Werder Bremen in his case where he was absolutely brilliant. Back at Chelsea, in the 2013-14 season, De Bruyne made just nine appearances, only three in the league, during the first half of the season, before Chelsea accepted a bid of £18 million from Wolfsburg in the January transfer window. In his only full season at Wolfsburg, De Bruyne was remarkably good, scoring 16 goals, making a quite incredible 28 assists, and winning the Bundesliga Player of the Year award. Hence why Manchester City immediately came in with a club record bid of £55 million. That has since proved to be one of the Sitton's shrewdest pieces of transfer business, and, to my mind at least, De Bruyne has been the best midfielder on the planet for at least the last three years. And boy oh boy, did Chelsea wish that he was in their midfield now. Right wing, Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah might just have failed to get a goal or an assist in a 9-0 Liverpool win, which I'm still not quite sure how that is possible, and... I can only assume that it is a direct result of me choosing to captain him on FPL, but do not be fooled, the Liverpool star remains one of the finest players on the planet. Even during Liverpool's turgid start to this season prior to that demolition job of Bournemouth, Salah was the one man who had still delivered. Chelsea signed Salah after he had delivered a couple of times against them in Europe for FC Basel when he had a growing reputation within the game. A little bit like De Bruyne, Salah never really got a run of games at Stamford Bridge, and as such, he failed to fully exhibit what he was capable of doing. As with De Bruyne, Salah went out on loan with a view to a permanent, in his case to Roma, and that option, incredibly with the benefit of hindsight, set Roma back just 15 million euros. Unsurprisingly, they triggered it, and a year later Liverpool took him off their hands in a deal worth 43 million pounds. Salah has since scored 159 goals in 259 games at Anfield, and you can count on one hand the number of players who have been that prolific or that productive during that same time. Certainly, no one can come close at Stamford Bridge. Left wing, Timo Werner. By far the most recent Chelsea departee in this 11, Timo Werner was sold by Chelsea just a few weeks ago to RB Leipzig, two years after arriving in West London from the Red Bull franchise. In his last season with Leipzig, Werner scored 34 goals, resulting in a whole host of clubs lining up to trigger his £47.5 million release clause. Chelsea won that race, but despite Werner continuing to score prolifically for the German national team, and the presence of international teammate Kai Havertz alongside him, and a compatriot as his head coach, things just never quite clicked for Werner in England. Chelsea never really played to his strengths, if we're being honest, and his missed chances were magnified a lot more than they had been, and indeed will be at Leipzig. Sold by Chelsea for almost half what they had paid for him, Werner is a Chelsea reject, but I have little doubt that he will be outstanding for Leipzig once again, and based on current ability, I still think that he firmly warrants an inclusion ahead of the likes of Jeremy Bogger, and Thorgan Hazard. Centre forward, Tammy Abraham. I must make a quick disclosure when it comes to centre forward, since you might quite reasonably be thinking to yourselves, what about Romelu Lukaku, who is surely the best Chelsea reject at centre forward based upon current ability, despite distinguished competition from the likes of Tammy Abraham, Alvaro Morata, and Eddie Anketia. I do think that Lukaku is better than those three at this moment in time, but the reason that I left him out is because he is still contracted to Chelsea, and therefore cannot, I don't think, meet the strict criteria of Chelsea reject just yet, despite having already been let go once by the club, and almost certain to be sold again next summer. 
That is good news for Tammy Abraham, who is a very worthy inclusion in his own right. Electric for both Chelsea and England, at youth team level, Chelsea decided to give Abraham a run of games, again, under Frank Lampard following their transfer ban, after he had enjoyed a sensational season on loan at Aston Villa. Abraham scored 18 goals in 47 games for Chelsea that season, including 15 in the Premier League, but over the summer Kai Havertz and Timo Werner came in, and a year later, they were joined by Romelu Lukaku as well. It was clear that Abraham wasn't going to get a satisfactory amount of game time for someone who was already a senior England international, hence his £34 million move to Roma. Abraham struck 27 times in 53 games in the Italian capital last season, and it is worth noting that neither Timo Werner nor Romelu Lukaku were able to better his tally of 18 goals at Chelsea in either of the previous two seasons. Chelsea do have the option to bring Abraham back to the bridge for a fee of £68 million, so twice the amount that they sold him for. So that is our 11 from Neil Etheridge through to Tammy Abraham, and the seven-man bench reads Jamal Blackman, Tarek Lamptey, Felipe Luiz, Oriol Romeu, Juan Cadrado, Thorgan Hazard, and Alvaro Morata. My question to all of you fine people, or two questions in fact, is where do you think that this team would finish in the Premier League? And crucially, is it better than the actual current Chelsea team? I think it's hard to argue that the front three isn't better than what Chelsea have now. There is much more star power with both Salah and De Bruyne. The midfield and front three are both brilliant, actually, with a couple of excellent centre-backs. Real-life Chelsea are still stronger defensively and in goal, but overall, I think it's a tough call and I'm certain that this side would be firmly in the hunt for a top four finish in the Premier League. But, you know, what I think is unimportant, let me know what you think. That is it for today's video. Thank you all very much as ever for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if that was the case. As I said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on, as HITC7s rapidly closes in on half a million subscribers. You can also find me on Twitter, or over on Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so. Cheers, and have a great day.